Hello everyone, this is the Magic Bomb here, and I'm going to be casting a uh, StarCraft 2 game with my good friend DK here, who's going to be playing a ladder game, and he's spawning in the bottom side on Cloud Kingdom, and his opponent is going to be Artemis, the Protoss player in blue, spawning at the top right. Now this is a two-player map, so you, these opponents should know exactly where they're spawning. Um, so. This leads to sometimes people going into some shenanigans like uh, two gating or two raxing, as well as as well as stuff like a uh, banshee pressure and stuff like that. Now, it looks like this SCV doesn't seem to want to do any work. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit strange. So um, I might not be as excited in this cast as I previously, simply because it's three o'clock in the morning at the moment. So I'm a little sleepy. Plus, I woke up this morning at 7 a.m., so I've been awake since 7. Yep. It's a while. So, we're seeing a pylon go down and a second pylon go down. So, and a third pylon go down. So, standard three pylon build. I don't know. So, um, yeah, we're seeing DK start his racks now. And, uh, yeah, this is just a standard game. Um, DK actually sent me a whole bunch of replays, so I'll be casting a lot of games of him on the ladder. And it looks like this SCV is going to die, and this probe manages to just survive with 5 HP. Lucky little probe. So, um, yeah, it looks like he's got plenty of room now to build a lot of buildings if he wants to. You can build as many gateways, or maybe a cyber core as well if he wants to. Or even more pylons. <laughs> Never know. And we're seeing a 2 racks here. Oh, I see. So... The question is, is he going to get a gas and turn this into like a stim timing, or is he just going to build a bunch of marines and attack? So we're seeing a forge. This is going to be good for um, putting cannons down. He's got uh, a pile down already, so he can put cannons on the over here if he needs to. Um, but And he probably might have to, considering there's uh, two gateways on... the uh, two barracks on the way at the moment. So... We're seeing the Protoss player Chrono boost a whole bunch of probes out. This is always good in the early game because it helps uh, st stimulate your economy, I guess. Makes it a lot more powerful in the later stages of the game because you're, you've are you got more workers. And you need, really need to do this, especially against Terran, because they've got mules. So, um, yeah. It looks like he's going to take, take his gas now, so he's just going to maybe build like six or seven marines, maybe push out, see if he can do some damage, kill a zealot, kill a pylon, something like that. We're seeing the first zealot on the way, and we're seeing a cyber core. This isn't the best place to put a cyber core, I think, because um, in the later stages, when the Terran player has marauders and medevacs, they can have the marauders on the low ground and have the medevacs see the high ground and start shooting at this, and there's nothing the Protoss player can do, especially if he doesn't want to engage. So it's not the best place to put it. You want to try and keep your tech as far back as possible, but then if you keep it far back here, this is usually where uh, a Terran player would like to scan because they expect someone to hide their tech over here. So, putting it here in this case, if a scan comes down, is good. But, usually most Protoss players go for Cybercore anyway if they're not going to be uh, aggressive too early on. So, oh, well, this is nice, it's putting two cannons at the front. This will protect from anything coming this side or this side. And, also, it's far away from the can from the pylon, so... If anything comes along, it's going to have to walk all the way around this uh, pylon. Well, all the way around this cannon before it's going to be able to attack this pylon. However, if a Banshee comes from behind and starts attacking this pylon, or well, these two pylons now, this is actually smart by him, he's uh, reinforcing his energy, I guess, or whatever it is that uh, powers these buildings. So instead of having one pylon, there's two, so he, I guess it'll last longer. And he's putting down not a second cannon, a third cannon, sorry. This is not, I'm not really sure he should be doing, he should be saving his money now to put a Nexus down. And there you go, see, this is like two extra cannons where he could have just saved up and if he had not put these down, he would have had an extra 300 minerals. So at this point in time, he would right now be able to put a Nexus down, but sadly he's going to have to wait for another 400 minerals. And we see DK just uh, gearing up possibly for an attack. He's got a, one Marauder out, he's got Concussive Shell, and it looks like he might push out with his Concussive Shell and see if he can do some damage. However, with these cannons all done now, it's going to be really hard for him to do anything. I guess the if he sees these cannons, the best response will be to just expand a couple of times maybe, out-expand his opponent, and he sees... let's see what he sees. Absolutely nothing. He sees a couple of pylons and no nexus, so he's probably assuming either some form of defen defensive play just by looking at these pylons in the 
kind of a defensive place. Or maybe he's expecting some kind of rush and this, these two pylons are just placed for no apparent reason. But uh, it hasn't looked like he's uh, made any response based on that scan, so... Oh yeah, it looks like he has. He's decided that uh, the Protoss player is probably trying to get, get an expansion out based on these pylon positions. And yeah, DK looks like he's going to expand. I'd suggest um, rather putting your command center on the low ground if you can uh, afford to, especially if you've got uh, a small force out already and it's easily defendable. So, um, yeah, we're seeing a factory come out now, and he's already got stim almost done, and concussive shell is already done, so he's probably going to go for combat shield soon. And his plus one is also almost done, so he might actually want to go for a timing still. But, like I said before, these cannons, they're, they're really tough against this uh, bio ball, especially early game. So, once we get into the mid game and maybe into the later game, then those cannons might not be as uh, effective. So, it's finally seeing a Nexus code go down. This isn't too late uh, for this league. I think it's Silver League, I think. Or maybe, I think it's Bronze, actually. So, uh, this is actually a good time to get a, a Command Center and an Nexus out. So, these players are doing pretty well in uh, based on their leagues and what they're actually doing, which is trying to set up for a macro game. And I always say, I always try to get to the, to the late game, especially... Um, uh, when I play on ladder, just because uh, you get the most amount of experience when you play uh, into the late game. I find that uh, if you tend to stay in the early game too long, and well, you only play the early game, then you get really good at that. But then when uh, a game goes too long, you start uh, losing focus or losing stamina, stuff like little things like that, and it ends up causing you to lose games that you can potentially win just by playing more macro games. And uh, yeah, so. The problem with that is though, you get tired a lot more easily, <laughs> just because you're playing such long games and they can be really stressful sometimes. Yeah, I, I play uh, mainly as a Zerg race, so uh, I'm pretty sure Zerg is probably the most stressful kind of race there is because you have to try and balance the risk of over droning with the risk of um, only building units and then falling behind in the macro. So, we're seeing a noble command come out now. We're seeing more SCVs, and he's rallying his new SCVs to this next base, which is smart. He's also got both command centers rallied. And, uh, yeah, we're seeing Observer. This is, a, this is a good call by the Protoss player, just to see what's going on, see whether he's going for Bio or if he's going for Siege Tanks, and he should be seeing the Siege Tank tech. And uh, he should also see this um, uh, thing whirring and burring, I guess, this tech lab. So he should know that either Siege Tanks are coming or Blue Flame Hellions. And if he sees this with a... Met, with a uh, starport, he should probably assume that there might be some blue flame hellions coming in. The thing is, the blue flame hellion has had a recent nerf, so even it, even getting blue flame doesn't seem to improve the amount of DPS that it does against uh, probes. Not that it does less damage, but uh, it, take, it still takes three hits of a hellion to roast a probe, whereas um, previously it used to only take two if you got blue flame hellions. Now, uh, it, regardless of whether you have blue flame or red flame, they still do. Uh, they still take three hits. But um, one thing that you should probably keep in mind though is if you do get an armory and you get plus one, the, they do start to uh, do some... they do start to kill workers in two hits as opposed to three. So, yeah, we're just seeing a nice macro game. We're seeing both players starting to build up a force. And uh, so now what it comes down to at this point in time is how good is the uh, each of these players macro? So will Artemis here be able to warp in enough units, or will DK here have enough barracks that producing uh, marines and marauders and not getting supply blocked as well? How many uh, whether he'll have a big enough army to be able to defend? So another thing um, DK told me as well is that he's actually a really good uh, Protoss killer. He's a He's, he considers uh, versing Protoss to be his best matchup because uh, he, I guess, he just understands the matchup best, uh, better than I guess Protoss players, and he's able to uh, have, a, I guess, an advantage over Protoss players when he plays, especially to the late game, I guess. But um, yeah, so it looks like he's doing something curious here. He's sending like a little small force just to see what's going on. And 
it looks like it's probably not going to do all that much against this, these cannons. He's going to stim up and try and attack. He's going to try and run in and kill his, his pilot, but uh, luckily Artemis has got two pilots here, so even if he kills this off, if he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't kill it off. Uh, yeah, he's still got uh, enough uh, energy to power all these uh, cannons. And it's pretty cool, actually, the way he's uh, made these cannons. He's made it so it's like an arc, so both these uh, pylons can power all of these, so that's kind of cool. So now uh, DK is a bit behind now because he's lost uh, a small portion of his army. Had it been with his, the rest of his army, his army would be a lot more fearsome, but it looks like he's used that small attack in order to scare the Protoss player into you know, not looking to see his third base, but he does have an observer here. He could easily just uh, move to the third base and see whether he's taken one yet, and hence take one himself but he doesn't seem to be looking at his observer. I guess he's um, just keeping it there in fear of getting, making it get lost in case uh, DK sees it, but I'm not sure if DK is even aware that there's an observer on the field right now. So, I don't know. It just seems he's getting a planetary fortress here. This is a smart choice, usually. Like, um, it's a pretty far away expansion. It's hard to defend. It's not the worst to defend. Like, if your army is here, you can easily swing this way and that way. But the fear is that it'll uh, they'll run past with a whole bunch of zealots, kill off a whole bunch of uh, what's called uh, SCVs, and then you'll be screwed. So this is something strange that DK is doing now. He seems to be splitting his army into half. He's got one army at home, and he's got one army out in the field. This isn't the best um, strategy when you're going for like a big push play kind of thing, where you're attacking with a big army to try and uh, totally destroy the opponent. And, uh, yeah, so he's got, like, half an army here, and half an army there. The good thing is he's got a medevac here, so it's, he'll be able to heal up all these troops, and he might even have a vision of the high ground to be able to, like I said before, snipe this cybernetic school. But, at the moment, he's, uh, his main goal is to try and take out these cannons. One thing he can do is just siege up on the bottom here, put a marine, like, close by, just so he can have vision of the, uh, cannon, and just start shelling it. The problem there is, it takes a while to, for the, for that... Uh, siege tank to take out that cannon, and in that time, this big, big force of Protoss, pl Pro Protoss units are going to be you know, marching up to his front door. And these these zealots and stalkers, they're pretty good against uh, siege tanks. Uh, you might not think so because they're not, they don't have the most amount of health compared to stuff like I don't know, Colossus, Immortals, um, or even like A units that are pretty good against it. But uh, like these are actually are pretty good units, and it looks like he's going to be dropping. This is a cool play, he's um, actually got five uh, warp prisms and he's probably going to be go trying to drop, but the problem now is he's actually getting pressured. So he's probably going to have to unload all these units and try and defend this place before he can start dropping. And it looks like DK is also trying to drop, no he just, I think he's just had a misclick. So here comes the army, you can see a by DK, he's going to come in and attack and all the stalkers are getting totally destroyed by these orders, but now the zealots come in, siege tanks are going to work seeing four kills in this, six kills, two kills. We're seeing a lot of kills by these uh, siege tanks, but that looks like good. And the siege tank is going to do a bit more damage, but the stalkers are all going to clean it up. So, altogether it's not the best uh, trade. And also you can see these six war prisms, almost all of them full. Well, half of them full, actually. DK sees it, and he's going to stim up, he's going to kill one, he's going to kill two, he's going to kill three. So there's only two zealots left inside all of these war prisms. And the war prisons itself are really expensive, so he's already killed like 800 minerals worth of uh, resources. I think that's how much it costs. Let's see. Yeah, it costs 200 minerals to build a war prism. So it looks like these war prisms are just going to be flying paperweights that are used to scout the third base now. So now that he's seen the third base, I'm assuming he's going to want to try and take his own third base. But, uh. Oh, it looks like he's got a lot of SCVs here. He might want to try and transfer. This is something cool that uh, DK likes to do as well. He likes to get a lot of upgrades. He's got plus three, plus three all, all the way, already on the way. Whereas if we look at the Protoss play, he's also got he's got plus two, plus two, and he's starting to get some void rays out. That's interesting. And yeah, it looks like he's getting plus three attack and plus three armor is also coming on the way. This is something strange. He hasn't. He's got warp gate technology, but he's not actually using it. He's still building units out of his gateways. This is uh, one of the Things that you see commonly in uh, a bronze play, um, just people don't know all the different uh, abilities that they're racing. 
One thing that this guy does know how to do with Artemis is that he can drop units that Kroll was he didn't do it as effectively as he could have. So he comes to DT. Uh, I don't think he has... Oh yeah, nice. He's, he sees the DT instantly, scans it immediately, and... So he's still up. These siege tanks are really, really good. But now here comes the tech switch to Void Razor. We've got nothing that can take out these Void Razor. These siege tanks are all going to be down. These Marauders, they're going to get as many uh, probe kills as they can before they die, but it's all looking good. And yeah, you can see here, like, just having a siege tank here, you can all already siege up this and start attacking the Cyber Core. And Cyber Core is really important for Protoss units, uh, pro for the Protoss player, because Artemis can't build uh, sentries, can't build stalkers can't tech up if he loses any tech buildings like Twilight Counts and stuff like that. But now that he's uh, revealed his hand that he has DTs and he has Void Rays, uh, DK here can just uh, do what uh, a Terran player should do, which is just push out, kill him off before he has a substantial force. Because Dark Templars, they're not that, they're not that big a force. He's, um, he's, he should probably start saving energy for scans. Look at these, uh, this one here should have enough scan by the time he gets to the opponent's base. And this command center here will also have enough energy for scans. He should have two scans by the time he gets in. It looks like he's destroying these destructible rocks. That's usually good when you're pushing out because your whole army can uh, get there faster, I guess, instead of like coming in a conga line, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, we're seeing uh, the DK is going to be on is on three bases, and it looks like he's sieging up on the low ground, and he's going to totally destroy all these units. He scans as well just to make sure. And these Marines, they're plus three, plus three against zero, zero upgraded Void Rays. Not going to stand a chance. Marines are just really, really powerful units altogether. Siege tanks just chilling out, making sure everything's every having a good time. See, this is why I said he has two scans, not just one, so he can uh, defend himself a lot easier. And he should be, yeah, he should be getting enough energy as well to move out with, move out with another force and have another couple of scans ready too. So, yeah, this is a really good play by DK at the moment. He's sieging up as well, being really safe, just moving up a little bit, moving a little bit. He hasn't got enough Marines, so you probably should uh, start spamming Marines out, maybe double-click these Marines and stick them up, just to try and get closer to try and take out this, uh, this Void Ray. Maybe you can get away with his siege tanks. These are eight siege tanks, they're really good. And yeah, here we go, he's going to try and uh, take out this side board. Like I said before, the side board, not the best positioning. In fact, this uh, robotics facility is also not the best position. You want to try and keep your stuff away from ledges, especially against Terran, because Terran are generally really good against uh, having all their units at range, so as long as they have vision, they can take them out. And there goes the GG, Artemis calls GG. And that's it. So, thanks for watching this, uh, this game that I've casted, and hopefully I didn't sound too tired, and hopefully you enjoyed it.